In the late 1980s, McDonald's had an issue with their public image. A millionaire US businessman, Phil Sokoloff, survived a heart attack and took to the headlines to demand changes in the McDonald's menu due to its poor effects on heart health. Around the same time, sweepstakes promotional campaigns were very popular. In 1987, McDonald's would begin their own in the form of the Monopoly campaign, in which customers in America could win prizes through instant win tickets, or by collecting property stickers and completing a specific collection. The game proved successful and became a popular part of McDonald's marketing on a yearly basis. While people could win meals, holidays or vehicles, the grand prize of $1 million was the main draw. However, no matter how many drinks, sandwiches and meals people bought, they would never win the grand prize. It was rigged. In the year 2000, the FBI received an anonymous call that there was fraud being committed. Little information was given except a few names and the ringleader, Uncle Jerry. Using this information, the FBI were able to locate a family in Jacksonville, where a number of the past winners lived. The odds of one person winning the yearly grand prizes were low. The odds that many connected people had won were astronomical. It was clear something was amiss. The FBI informed McDonald's top executives, who were concerned. Not only did fraud indicate the game was unfair on their customers, but who was involved? Having an internal fraudster or even crime ring internally could be a disaster for McDonald's. Apprehensive about staging a rigged competition, McDonald's agreed to aid the FBI in their search. However, McDonald's would tell the FBI they don't run the competition directly due to regulation. They had hired a company, Simon Marketing, to manage the Monopoly competition. Simon Marketing was a Los Angeles promotions company in charge of the Monopoly game. They would tell the FBI that the only other company involved was a Georgia-based printer specializing in gambling called Dittler Brothers. The procedure of printing the tickets was heavily monitored with cameras and security teams. The printed tickets would use UV technology to avoid counterfeiting, and the winning tickets themselves would be locked within a vault behind a dual combination access. One of the key employees between Simon Marketing and Dittler Brothers printing was head of security Jerry Jacobson, who would oversee this operation. One day, Jerry Jacobson of Simon Marketing met Jerry Colombo in an airport. Colombo was a member of an infamous crime family and was en route to Atlantic City to gamble. The two Jerrys shared a common interest in the gaming industry. Colombo had a history in crime and had even opened up a strip club cross church, the Church of Fuzzy Bunnies. Colombo's wife, Robin, stated that late one night, while looking for a snack, she found a grey M&M in their house, the key component from the 1997 Find the Imposter M&M promotional campaign a campaign that Mars had established through Simon Marketing. In 2001, the FBI had opened their investigation, named after the alternative McDonald's game branded Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Operation Final Answer. The operation involved 25 agents tapping phone lines and recording conversations. By tapping the phone calls of winners, the FBI would develop a web of people connected to a complex fraud scheme that had been running for years. Several people had been assigned as distributors who passed winning tickets on to friends or colleagues who in turn would use their friends or colleagues to cash the tickets. The people involved were cautious in their approach. However, despite the use of alternative addresses and phone numbers, the FBI were able to discover a pattern in winner locations across the East Coast. Along with recorded phone call evidence, the FBI joined with McDonald's to stage fake celebration interviews with the winners. Under the guise of McDonald's marketing staff, the undercover team had the winners on camera confessing a detailed false story. Once the FBI had collected enough evidence, including this advert appearance of Jerry Colombo winning a Dodge Viper. They conducted eight arrests at the suspects' homes. One of those suspects was Jerry Jacobson, the head of security at Simon Marketing. The FBI had found the Uncle Jerry from the anonymous phone call. With the arrests came a media spotlight, and the general public was shocked to find out their participation in the nationwide event had been in vain. A former deputy attorney general famously said, people that were buying the hamburgers, all they were getting at this point was cholesterol. With Uncle Jerry and his web of criminals identified, how did the winning tickets manage to leave a secure facility and make it into the hands of distributors such as Jerry Colombo? The secret was that Jerry Jacobson of Simon Marketing had mistakenly received a completely unexpected win of his own, security seals. One of the major components in the security of the winning stickers at Simon Marketing and Dittler Brothers was security seals. When the winning tickets had been cut, they were placed in an envelope, sealed with unique anti-tamper stickers and transported by two people, an external auditor and Jerry Jacobson. Jacobson would excuse himself to a toilet, originally having access to a suitcase and later using a modified vest to carry the stickers and open the sealed envelopes. Take the winning stickers, replace them with ordinary stickers and apply brand new security seals. Over the years, the same auditor, Hilda Bennett, 
was consistently requested to be a part of the operation by Jacobson, likely due to her ongoing oversight, which itself had even received FBI suspicion. HBO Macmillan's filmmakers stated that this incident was one of the darkest periods of her life, and she didn't want to be involved in their documentary. After building a crime syndicate, the winning tickets would be distributed to friends and colleagues. Some would be gifts or payment. Others would be subjected to a complicated system. In one case, a winner had to pay tax on the $50,000 yearly payments, whilst handing a $25,000 split to Jerry Colombo, without detection. Another winner remortgaged their house to make an initial payment to Colombo to unwittingly take part in the fraud. Over 50 individuals were convicted, the charges being mail fraud and conspiracy respectively. The charges of mail fraud were established through the use of the US Postal Service. For example, the redemption form in order to claim a win was sent through the civil service. This is a federal crime in the US. Jacobson, who had stolen a total of $24 million worth of prize tickets from McDonald's, was sentenced to 37 months in jail, with $12.5 million to be paid in monthly installments of over $300, about the same monthly payments as the average student loan payment in America. Before the investigation, Jerry Colombo died following a car crash in 1998. He would then be replaced by a former drug trafficker, who was prosecuted. With the careful steps taken by everyone involved in this fraud, it's thought that without the anonymous call to the FBI, this fraud could have continued undiscovered. So, who made the call? In the HBO documentary McMillions, a few fingers are pointed. Jerry Colombo's son is blamed. One winner reported their tax complications to the IRS. One participant had suspected there was no call to the FBI at all, and that the FBI had been working on the theory themselves. However, conclusively, the anonymous caller had been Jerry Colombo's own mother. Mark Colombo had reported the crime with the intention of framing Jerry's wife, Robin, and gaining custody of their son following Jerry's death in the car crash. The impact of these crimes goes further than just McDonald's as a company. A lot of the individuals approached by the crime syndicate were quoted as being destitute and are now listed as federal criminals, not to mention all the participants across America that never had a chance of winning. McDonald's also cut their business with Simon Marketing, and as a result, both Simon Marketing and Titler Brothers collapsed. Many jobs were lost due to the greed of one man. Jerry Jacobson avoids the media and did not appear in the HBO documentary. However, he is quoted in court documents saying, All I can tell you is I made the biggest mistake of my life. McDonald's confirmed they have a new approach to the security of their ongoing Monopoly games, and it seems fair to say it will be a secure and monitored procedure. Unfortunately, the innocent people that lost jobs and livelihoods are mostly forgotten, considered collateral damage of Jerry Jacobson's crime. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.